Let's give them a show they'll never forget. Hey guys. Hello, gorgeous. Somehow, the iconic 80s leaders have eluded being the focus of an episode thus far, so I put it to a vote on the Patreon page. And while I love all of these heroes of the 80s that stood for honor and courage, I was especially happy to see who won. I've been waiting for this chance. So here it goes. One of my biggest inspirations. The leader of the Autobots. The guardian of freedom. The peaceful warrior who was as wise as he was strong. This very special episode is dedicated not just to the toy, but to the spirit that resided within the plastic, chrome, and tires of Optimus Prime. I am Optimus Prime, leader of the Autobots. There's been many different versions over the past three plus decades, but the first will always be the most special to me. Optimus Prime is one of my biggest heroes. Not cartoon hero, not toy hero, just hero, period. And I'm completely open, honest, and sincere about that. Look, I get it. There are lots of people in this world who feel threatened by sincerity, or are just miserable souls with no empathy for those who aren't miserable. So they wear a mask of cynicism and like to try to tear people down who are honest about what they're passionate about. But here's where the disconnect lies. I get why they don't like people who are fearlessly sincere. I don't think they get why those people are fearlessly sincere, and why they continue to be despite all of the criticism, hate, and lack of respect they're shown. And maybe it's because they didn't grow up on Optimus Prime. When so many heroes would retaliate and give as good as they got, Prime's peaceful, metallic voice boomed over all of the other battle cries with such words of wisdom as We must not stoop to their level. Optimus was voiced on the Transformers animated series by the incomparable Peter Cullen. Sort of. Yes, the lungs that the booming bass came from were Peter's. But the spirit? Yep, that's a word I keep using. That thing you can't see. The spirit of Optimus Prime was from Peter's brother Larry, a retired captain in the United States Marine Corps. When Peter mentioned to his brother that he was on his way to audition for the part of Hero Truck, Larry told him, Well, if you're going to be a hero, Peter, be a real hero. Don't be one of those pretend Hollywood heroes always yelling and acting tough. Be a real hero. And that's a major reason why Optimus has so much gentleness in his voice, despite the power he possesses. Because real heroes don't need to yell. They let their actions do all the talking. And when he did talk, we always felt Optimus was talking with others, not at them. You've seen the 80s toy museum featured in the virtual tour videos on this channel. Have I ever shown you the light switch? Yeah, I decided this room would need a kitschy light switch cover. But who to place on it? What character could possibly represent bringing light to this amazing, colorful room? Just me! It was a no-brainer. Optimus Prime brought so much light to the kids of the 80s, only the indomitable spirit and Matrix within his Freightliner chest could bring light to this room as well. Some people will say, Come on, it's just a toy. Or, So much hyperbole. Some may accuse. Optimus Prime would say, Stop fighting! What a revolutionary concept. A peaceful warrior. Someone capable of great feats in war, and did everything in his power to never have to use it. I remember asking my brother when I first heard of Optimus Prime, what does Optimus mean? My brother informed me, Optimist. It's someone who's always positive, always has hope, always looks on the bright side. I like the sound of that. A character whose attitude wasn't conditional. It wasn't based on if he won, or if he lost. If he had an easy day, or if he took a beating, and trust me, he took many beatings. <laughs> you okay, Optimus? A bit battered, old friend, but alive. Some saw him as a loser or a whipping boy for the Decepticons. My sensors detected an iron will. 
a never give up attitude. No matter the cost. It's not on the surface. You have to look deeper. And that's why so many miss it. His attitude wasn't dependent on what happened to him. He controlled it. He was the Autobot commander and the commander of what went on inside his own head. There's plenty of people who miss all this stuff. They're just concerned with the surface, that he was a cool truck and that's it. Maybe I was blessed with being blind as a bat as a kid. It forced me to look deeper, look closer, and pick up on things my blurry eyes couldn't see. And by the time I got a pair of glasses, I didn't really need them anymore to see Prime for who he really was. The detail was just a bonus. I cared about what was under the hood. Originally released as Battle Convoy as part of the Japanese Diaclone line, Optimus Prime was released in 1984 in North America as part of the first wave of Transformers toys. The Transformers, more than meets the eye. This repro box shows you just how big this guy was compared to the other Autobots released that year. Like the G.I. Joe packaging, Hasbro featured custom character art on the front, and the tech specs on the back are Hama-esque in their ability to immediately establish exactly what Prime is all about. The quote, freedom is the right of all sentient beings, shows Prime isn't just a champion for Autobots, he's grown past patriotic flag-waving and has become one with all. Put her there, partner. A champion of all living things. Not just things that look like him. The bio reads, Optimus Prime is the largest, strongest, and wisest of the Autobots. Feels his role is the protection of all life, including Earth life. Fights unceasingly to defeat the Decepticons. Splits into three autonomous modules. Number one, Optimus Prime, the brain center known as the Commander. Number two, Roller, the Autobot scout car a spy who operates up to 1,200 miles away. And number three, Autobot Headquarters, the combat deck equipped with a versatile mechanic slash artillery robot. Injury to one module is felt by the other two. The first release had a number of details that were tweaked for subsequent releases. These included bloated fists, blaster and gas pump, gray missiles, roller and roller launcher in the trailer, and metal plates in the floor of the combat deck which was a feature from the Diaclone line to be used with drivers who had magnetic feet. Along with Cabbage Patch Kids, Prime was one of the first toys I remember being impossible to find in stores. Get him! One kid had him at school though, and he was glorious. I remember checking at my local toy store for what felt like months to no avail until one day I saw an entire pyramid made up of Optimus Primes. One of the most awe-inspiring images from my childhood to be sure. I remember asking my mom, can I, please? We didn't have much money, but she knew this wasn't just a cool toy that I'd get sick of after a week. She knew Prime was my hero. She saw how I'd get up early every Sunday morning to watch him on WUTV Buffalo 29 the Fox affiliate in Ontario. She saw me make him out of plasticine and recreate the adventures from the Sunbow animated series and come up with new ones as well. There was no begging or tantrums thrown that day. My mom knew this wasn't just a toy I was asking for. It meant something more to me and she was right. Today, 34 years later, I still have my original Optimus Prime that my mom bought for me in late 84 at Highway Market in Kitchener. And while some of the chrome has been worn off, no broken parts, joints are still tight, and all pieces still accounted for. Optimus is as good as the day he rolled off the Mechanico line. He even still has the original stickers, and it's one of the most special pieces in this toy museum. It's not just a symbol of what Optimus Prime means to me, it's also a symbol of the sacrifice my parents made so that I could not just watch a hero on TV, but carry him around in my hands. Have him on my nightstand while I dreamed of Cybertron. A planet far from Earth. Overtime worked at the factory so that I could look up to someone who wasn't a badass. He was pure, selfless, wise, compassionate. In an industry populated with larger than life characters who tried to outdo each other with rambunctious behavior, Prime was literally one of the biggest and strongest 
but preached logic, patience, an analytical mindset. The Thinking Warrior. Let's not do anything rash. This is the second release of Optimus Prime, with smaller fists, blaster, and gas pump. The head panel featured the new rub sign, where the faction logo would be revealed with body temperature. Revolutionary stuff for 1984. The missiles and roller launcher in this release were changed to black, and roller was changed to the same dark purplish blue plastic that was used on Prime's fists, head, and legs. In vehicle mode, Prime was king of the road in the 80s as a Freightliner FL86 cab over semi-truck. And that was one of the coolest things about Transformers. They were two toys in one. Truly more than meets the eye. Not only was he an awesome robot, but he was also an awesome truck that could haul other Autobots in his trailer. Now you could have a convoy of your own with Big Red leading the way. Let's roll! And he wasn't just pretty to look at in this mode. Prime was just as powerful in truck mode. He could smash through Decepticon barricades or act as a battering ram on the Decepts who weren't smart enough to get out of his way. A bit of a parts former, his fists don't reside in the forearms as with later Masterpiece releases. They have to be pulled out of the headlights and could be stored in the driver and passenger area since Diaclone drivers weren't included with Transformers. Or if you can track them down, you can have these custom Impossible Toys Spike and Spark Plug figures ride in style. Arctic Circle, here we come! His transformation is, in a word, magnificent. I've done it so many times and never get tired of it. It's like a Rubik's Cube for me almost therapeutic, and I can do it with my eyes closed at this point. The front windshield becomes his iconic chest. The back of the cab swings out to form the arms, and the tires fold down to form the powerful looking legs. I remember thinking 20 years ago how ahead of his time the engineering was, and again 10 years ago, and still to this day. While some of the other G1 bots had extremely limited articulation because of the transformation, Optimus managed to look fantastic in truck mode, have a superb robot mode, and still have foot, knee, thigh, shoulder, elbow, and wrist articulation, thanks to the design of his transformation. If you loosened a screw to his head and snipped some tiny pegs, you could even make his head look left and right, as long as the head wasn't glued in as with later reissues. In robot mode, the passenger area is empty and can house various official or third-party matrixes. Ma matrixes? Matrices? Customs are easy to come by these days on eBay, but back in the 80s, there were no third parties or 3D printers. Just plasticine. This is the original matrix I made in 1986 with some orange plasticine, a bead, and a yellow paper clip. No light of our darkest power. Prime speaks softly, but carries a big blaster. His ion rifle is just as iconic as Prime is, although it didn't fit very well in his fist. Subsequent reissues featured fists with elongated holes to grip the rifle better. That wasn't Prime's only weapon. You destroy everything you touch, Megatron! The Transformers Collection No. 0 reissue in 2003 included an energy axe that he used only once in the show, but has become the standard secondary weapon for Prime. An alternate version is also available from RenderForm.com. When not waiting in subspace, Prime's trailer could open up into the combat deck. He's splitting into his three components! Which reminds me more of a mask toy than a Transformers toy. 
There were arms on both sides that could swing out to support the halves folding down. This button could be pushed to launch roller out, mask style. The spring was always pretty weak in mine. But when I got the Japanese New Year Convoy reissue, I was shocked to see how much power their version had, due to the launcher being able to move further. The missiles could also be launched. And this command center had an articulated dish and gripping arm. It could also be opened to hold a diaclone driver, or years later, third party spike. There were also spots to hold other drivers. And Roller could hold four himself. Roller had six individual wheels and certainly lived up to his name. He could plug the gas nozzle contraption into his top to help Autobots refuel and could also be used by Prime for reconnaissance. It's up to you, Roller. Find out what's going on in there. And be careful! Or distraction. Stop that, Roller! The fact that the three units that make up Optimus Prime are autonomous, yet linked and feel each other's injuries, further portrays Prime as being more than just Prime. His empathy literally extends to two other beings, the Repair Robot and Roller, which I think perfectly symbolizes Prime's ability to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. And empathy was a trait he showed often in the animated series, even for those who had wronged him. You are going to face justice, and may it be kinder to you than it was to us. That's something you just don't see many people say, that I hope you don't have to go through what I went through, even to the very same people who made you go through it. That stirs something inside me. To be a bigger person. To not stoop to their level. I'm certainly given the opportunity to practice prime thinking on YouTube all the time with some of the hateful comments the Sean Burgers of the world leave here. The nitpickers, the bullies, the sociopaths and narcissists with no empathy, who don't infer meaning, and never give anyone the benefit of the doubt who judge solely based on appearance instead of action, and who are so quick to call others hypocrites without taking a good long look in the mirror themselves and pointing out all of the things that they say but don't do. Prime's probably a major reason why I don't engage those people, why I see them for who they are and don't value their opinion, and why I don't allow their negativity and disrespect to seep into my comment section, and why I haven't and won't ever quit. We can't ignore the danger. We must conquer it. You don't conquer it by quitting, but you also don't conquer by being uglier, angrier, more hateful. You conquer by maintaining your honor, by making grace, empathy, and understanding not just a guideline to follow, but an absolute law. To violate that law would destroy our honor. Honor's an archaic concept to a lot of folks these days. They don't get it. Maybe because they can't see it. It's not something tangible. I guess that's another reason to be grateful for growing up with poor eyesight. You can't see honor with mere eyes. There have been countless reissues over the years of G1 Optimus, as he's known, but my two favorites are the New Year Convoy Takara reissue version with deep blue windshield and blue eyes. Amazing. He looks exactly like me. And the music label Optimus, with a slightly lighter shade of blue for the windshield, and a new head sculpt on a ball joint that allows Prime to look up. I'm sorry, there are only three of you. There have also been various upgrade sets to fill in the gap in the back. Sideswipe, give me your rocket pack. A jet pack that also included a matrix compartment and opening matrix that could be inserted into the chest and this custom animated inspired back insert that I got many years ago from a customizer named Jangar and I've never seen for sale again since. It's a cool toy. It's a cooler personality. I get why there are so many who prefer Megatron. He's loud, brash, evil, full of himself. <laughs> Maybe they vicariously lived through him because he can say and do things they can only dream of. Megatron doesn't inspire me. He's just the iron that sharpened Optimus Prime's iron will. The one who kept Prime humble. Just remember, there's a thin line between being a hero and being a memory. 
the warning to Optimus Prime of what can happen when great power comes without great responsibility, to borrow a phrase from another hero. Optimus wasn't as cool or exciting, but he was right. And sometimes that's life, kids. Doing the right thing might not be the thrilling thing or the fun thing, but it's the right thing to do. They've got to be stopped and we're the only ones who can do it. Prime had the ultimate sense of duty. Not necessarily one that he liked or even enjoyed, but he did his duty because nobody else could as well as he could. And that's what makes the best leaders in my opinion. The people who would rather be doing anything else but lead. I think he'd make a neat president. I think the greatest people who have lived are the ones who followed their sense of duty over their sense of adventure or greed. It's a lesson that was so powerful I haven't forgotten it in over three decades. And it's my pleasure, no, my honor, no, it's my duty to share it with you. To pass on once again what writers who helped create Optimus Prime's character and Peter Cullen with his noble and powerful voice work passed on with the Transformers animated series in the 80s. Be selfless, be forgiving, show pity, not hate. Take the high road, focus on the positive, be optimistic. It's over, Prime. Never! Stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves. Try picking on a mechanism your own size. And push those who won't stand up for themselves to stand up and carry their own weight. But we're not fighters like they are, Prime. We must have courage, Huffer. Don't gloat. Don't brag. Follow your heart, but use your head. Don't bite off more than you can shred. Shut your eyes and focus on what's important. The things you can't see. Too preachy? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, it's hard to send out a positive message in this day and age. It's typically not considered to be cool or sick. To be a selfless person with an abundance of empathy. Or some misinterpret it to be condescending. Or holier than thou talk. Again, due to an abundance of ego and a lack of empathy. I think the time for inspiring others with a message of selflessness might be over. What do you think, Optimus? No, not yet. It is a worthy cause. The eternal optimist indeed. Thanks for the reminder, Prime. All right, let's go home. Was Prime your hero too? Leave a comment below and let me know what he meant to you. Feel free to share the video if you liked it. And to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Optimus, will you do the honors? Autobots, transform and roll out.